Hello everybody, welcome to Decoupaging with Michelle. If you like what you're seeing, go ahead and be sure to hit the subscribe button. That would be very kind of you. So today is part four, uh, the final step when we decoupage a jar. So what we're going to do is we're going to be sealing it. Now there are a variety of sealants out there. There's some spray ones, there's ones that you apply with a brush, which is what we're going to be doing. Some are matte, um, some are glossy. It's really about your preference. So let me tell you what I'm going to use. For all my sealing uh, of my jars, I use this Dura Clear. Um, I use the satin varnish. Um, I find that that um, gives it a good finished look. So that is that is my preference. So what I, so I have that, and I usually put my, my sealant in this little plastic cup. So it's the same kind of cup that I use when I put my paint in. It has a little lid, so I can, whatever I don't use, I can uh, put that on there. And it will last for a couple days. Um, I don't typically fill them up. I know about how much I need for the jars or the projects that I'm going to be using. Um, so that's the sealant we're going to be using there. Um, one of the things I always do, so I'm a, is uh, one, before we start sealing, we want to make sure that this edge, it looks good. Um, this is a, ba a bank, so I did not paint up to the very tippy top of the jar. I just went up to this top rim, and so I went ahead and cleaned this up. I left a little bit here. I'll show you how I clean them up just to give it a nice little look here. You can see there's a little bit of paint there. I'm actually getting one of these big old uh, box cutters, and I just kind of scraped down like that. I have, for me, this works the best. Um, you can really use anything sharp. Um, to me, it's just it's really easy. So that that was the last bit I wanted to finish up. So that was nicely edged there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do before I seal is I put my initials on the bottom. Um, I make a couple hundred of these usually, um, and I, every every three months I make about a hundred, hundred fifty jars. So I always put my initials on it, and then I put the year that I made it. I just put about 22 on here. Um, a lot of people like their their art that they buy and crafts that they buy signed, so I just do that automatically. So, um, pretty simple. Get your, get a brush. I think I got this brush here, uh, Dollar General. Came in a pack of a variety of sizes. I like this one. It has it's pretty flexible. If you can if you can see that on the on the jar. So I, I like how it, it, it enables me to um, really get in the grooves and, and gives it a nice look. So just dip it up. Really be generous with this. You don't want to uh, put too little on this. You, you really can't put too much. You just want to make sure it's nice and smooth. So I always go around. I, you know, I start at one place and then I go up here to the, to the top. And it kind of gives my, this is how I do it, it gives me my, my, my barrier there. So I know that I've done that top and this bottom. And then I'm just going to go and back and forth on this. And make sure there's no excess. I don't want any like drippy drips or any um, big lines that I can see. Now this dries clear, even though it looks kind of milky um, in this, it does dry clear. So I just want to make sure that I, I don't have any excess on there. I really just want to put that on nicely. Um, I do seal the bottom of it, obviously, um, but I do that last, uh, just just so I don't have to. I don't mess any of the paint up as I'm moving this around. So again, I'm going to go around my bottom again. I like to make sure these bottoms are really nicely sealed, um, especially for the vases when I know that they're going to be getting wet. The tops and the bottoms, I always like to put a little bit extra sealant on those. So I got some extra there. Again, this pretty simple back and forth. Now I can tell I have a light back here, so I can see the glare from the light. So I can I can ensure that all of my my jar is getting covered here. Almost back around to the to the beginning, and I'll seal this up nicely. And this is by far the quickest process of everything that we do. Um, so. That looks pretty good. No lines, nicely covered. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and seal the bottom. 
Now when I'm doing a vase, because uh, I, I don't paint the bottom of those, I make sure I put a really nice uh, heavy seal around that edge just in case uh, there's a water drippage from the vase if you put flowers in it. Um, so that's how I do that. And when I have these wet vases like this, um, some of the sometimes that this paint can be sticky. So I, I got one of these these clear cutting boards. I just use that clear cutting board. I believe I got it's a two pack from the Dollar Tree. Um, I just stick mine on there. As you can see, I have all kinds of marks on here. I just put that right on there and I let that dry. And I let that dry for 24 hours. Once this dries, this bank is will be complete and I will go ahead and put a lid on it and then that will be the finished product. Um, so I will be sure to post a picture once this dries. This is completely dry and we have that bank lid on there um, so you can see the absolute finished project. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope that this has been helpful and informative. I love to see some of the projects that everybody is doing. Please feel free to share anything. Um, obviously, this is my um, decoupaging with Michelle. is my YouTube page. My uh, Facebook page is Glass Designs by Michelle. Be great to follow me there. Um, I do lots of uh, show my new designs on there pretty regularly. So thank you, and again, remember to subscribe.